Hi, this is Ken Ferry with this season's first edition of Boots in the Field. Corn plots uh, are planted. We're uh, well underway on the side dressing. The bean plots were down to within the last half dozen or so to plant. So the planting season has kind of got stretched out on us, but uh, all in all, things look pretty good. I want to touch something uh, right away on the insect front. The cutworm that we're finding out there in the fields now are cutting plants. They're, they're past the pinhole stage for the most part. You're actually seeing cut plants. So let's be sure to be watching our corn stands. We don't want to lose any more than 3%. We're going to pull the trigger and take these out. And as we indicated uh, in our last newsletter, we've had some pretty strong flights of army worm. And uh, that has come true to produce some pretty strong actual numbers of armyworms out here in the wheat field. So all wheat farmers have to get to the field if they haven't been there and look for the actual damage or the armyworm. Some of the fields we're in this week have considerable amount of damage already. Others don't, but as we pull back the residue uh, on the soil, and that's where you're going to find them during the day. They're going to be laying between the residue and the soil. As we pull back the residue and look underneath, we're finding armyworms of all sizes. And it's easy to find up to 10, 12 per uh, every two square feet. So there's a lot of armyworm out there. And pretty much most of this weed is probably going to end up being sprayed. Now you may be able to coordinate that with your head scab spray. But remember the armyworm are pretty rough once they get going. And you want to spray the armyworm if the fungicide works at the same time and go ahead. Otherwise, uh, kill the armyworm first. Worry about the head scab later, depending on... Um, what the maturity of your weed is and that out there in the field itself but also we're going to have to watch all the corn fields and bean fields that border pastures crp acres buffer strips uh, we can have army worm there as well and definitely you guys with cover crop that you're planting corn into you want to pay attention to that i've seen army worm even beat up soybean stands so um, there's quite a few of them out there let's let's keep an eye on it this week was pretty much the uh, kickoff of what we call the ugly corn syndrome in corn meaning the a lot of this corn is in fourth collar and is starting to transition from the seed root to the crown roots or the true roots. And if there's anything that's delayed the crown root development, you're going to see stunting and delay in the corn, unevenness. So fields that were even a week ago are going to start to look uneven. I'm going to show that purple color of phosphorus uh, deficiency, kind of a stunting and growth. And um, you're going to watch. It's going to show up in wheel tracks and compaction patterns, that type of thing. Uh, if everything is went as planned and your crown roots developed, you won't see this in a field. It'll go uh, from, uh, you know, the third, fourth collar to fifth, sixth collar without any hiccups. But if there's been any type of delay in growth and development, it's going to show up this week and next week. And you want to be out there looking for that because when you do see it, you want to be able to diagnose what is it that slowed my crown root development down? Was it just weather? Was it um, insect feeding was a compaction most of what I've been in the last uh, seven or eight days is compaction so uh, that first pass compaction was just a little bit too wet when we went or we're running into sidewall smearing and it's causing a lot of the purple corn that we see out there itself now on top of that the carbon penalty started to kick in this week soil temperatures are warm enough that uh, we're going to see the carbon penalty in your corn on corn. So areas of high residue, the corn a little bit different than the ugly corn syndrome. The ugly corn syndrome is stunting and purpling where this is going to be yellow corn. So you're going to start to see different flashes of yellow across the field as well. And that's nitrogen deficiency and sulfur deficiency that we're looking at from the carbon penalty itself. It's going to be toughest in the corn on corn, but it will also show up in heavier residue, uh, even from bean residue. The corn fields themselves, this could last for another two weeks, depending on how you manage your nitrogen. In the corn soybean field, showing the nitrogen deficiency, that's probably only a four or five day event, and that's going to kind of disappear. You'll also be able to tell um, your starter uh, strips, if you've left starter off on the planter, or if you ran out strip till and things like that, they're going to be pretty evident. Hopefully it'll only be about a four or five day window of yellow corn. If it does stretch out into two weeks, we probably should negotiate maybe a different uh, front end nitrogen program for your corn on corn because two weeks of yellow corn will, will be dinging the yield itself. The side dress season is off and running. I've had a lot of nitrates come through the office already and uh, sending out recommendations. For the most part, the nitrate wrecks are actually lower or the nitrate rates are actually lower than I anticipated. There's more nitrogen missing than I was expecting. So we've had to bump most of the wrecks coming out of the office to account for that. Now, 
I'm guessing that the loss of nitrogen has to do with the way we've received rainfall this year. We're getting it four tenths at a time in most places. So a two inch rain may have come with, you know, with four or five tenths rains or so, and there's not much runoff. When you get a big rain, a, a two or three inch rain, about two thirds of it runs off and doesn't affect the nitrogen program that much. But with the uh, many increments of small rains, I think that must be showing uh, up in these nitrates. But for the most part, they're not terrible, but we are having to bump a lot of the wrecks coming through there today. And I expect in the areas where you guys are replanting corn due to the wet weather and wet conditions, that it's going to be the same thing, but maybe even a little worse. So again, um, side dressing season off and running, but it looks like we're going to have to lift our nitrogen rates a little bit, depending on the stands and depending on the weather pattern that you've had. Finish up uh, replant going on, replant in both corn and beans. The, for the most part, the corn replant is the low-lying areas and the side hills that just were too saturated. Most of that corn is just getting patched in. Soybeans, um, I don't think I've ever seen soybeans give up so quick this year. We've seen fields that I caught me by surprise that uh, when we got there, they were in trouble and needed to be replanted, and they weren't in the ground that long. But that cold, wet snap that we planted into for the soybeans, for some of these, were, was just too much. Now, a lot of soybeans are being replanted to thicken the stands. And remember, at this point, if you've got 70,000 plants out there per acre and you're thickening the stands, about all you're accomplishing is some better weed control. You're probably not going to change the yield much. So if you've got 120, 130,000 and you're trying to thicken them up out there, I'm not so sure that's the right call unless they're conventional beans in wide rows and you're worried about uh, weed control. That's a different game altogether, but if you're not worried about the weed control, be careful about just trying to thicken it up. Typically, uh, if the beans are below 70,000, we would tear them up and start over with a new stand. So that's all for this week, and I'll be talking to you next week. Keep it safe.